Hi, I don't know how to open this video. Let's talk about the movie Igor from 2008, directed by Tony Leondis. Before Igor, he made Kronk's New Groove? I actually didn't know that. That's crazy. That's also a good movie. And afterwards, he made... Igor was the last movie this guy made. He went out on a high note. I remember this movie quite vividly. You got John Cusack as the protagonist, Steve Buscemi as the rabbit character. <laughs> you know you've made a good piece of fiction when you have a sarcastic rabbit character. That's the missing piece of the formula. <laughs> also, most of this movie is dark purple. Big fan of that color, that's a good one. I was just going to jump into the movie, but I should probably explain what the movie is before I do that. So there's this evil kingdom full of evil scientists, and each scientist has a hunchback assistant named Igor. They're all named that. <laughs> but the protagonist, Igor, wants to be an evil scientist himself. And every year, there's an evil invention competition where all the evil scientists compete to see who's the most... Who has the most evil invention they they all try so the main character igor tries to make his evil invention but his invention turns out to be not evil at all and that's the conflict of the movie <laughs> so the film opens with and every time it rains it rains and it's from heaven don't you know each cloud contains banners from heaven? Shoopy doopy! You'll find your fortune falling all over town. Be sure that your umbrella is up, 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 upside down and trade them for a package of sunshine and ravioli. Nice weather we're having, huh? Iconic opening, in my opinion. The happy-go-lucky music with the dark evil storm in the background. The contrast of that is captivating. How could I possibly associate the song Pennies from Heaven with an elf doing shenanigans around New York City? After seeing this, are you kidding me? Get out of here. <laughs> here in the kingdom of malaria, every day's forecast is rainy. It never rains in this movie. With a 100% chance of horror. Yes, that is accurate. 100% horror. I'm scared for the entire runtime of this movie. So this used to be a sunny kingdom of farmers, but then the storm clouds rolled in and killed the crops, and now everyone's poor. And that's when King Malbert thought up a new way for us to make money. Evil inventions. What? The kind that crush you, kill you, bring you back to life, then kill you again. How does that make money, though? We invent them and the world pays us not to unleash them. Oh, okay. That doesn't raise any further questions whatsoever. Oh, it's a great gig, especially if you're an evil scientist. Fame, fortune, a rent-free castle in the hills. They get it all. They're the top of the heap. Were these scientists here before? Back when it was FarmersOnly.com Kingdom? Did they just show up here? Did they used to be farmers? And the bottom of the heap? Those are the poor slobs like me, born with a hunch on our back. Igors. Actually, that Igor's not me. No, 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 that, that's not me either. That's me, see? I look nothing like those other guys. Much better looking. <laughs> yep, that's me, the main character. Hi, I'm here about the Igor Wanted ad. My name's Igor. <laughs> well, of course it is. I've got a hunch on my back. What's my name gonna be, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't appreciate my creative style. So Kevin wants to be an evil scientist. In fact, he already has two inventions under his belt with Scamper and Brain. The comic relief. I made him immortal, which is kind of a hassle for him since he doesn't want to live. Will nothing end this vicious cycle? Yeah, he's suicidal for like the first couple scenes he's in, but after that he's just the sarcastic rabbit character. Doesn't even try to kill himself after like two, three failed attempts. He's like, hey, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I wanna live forever! I got plans and dreams! I got a squeaky wheel! Was that me? By the way, Brain is voiced by Sean Hayes, who also played the fish from the Cat in the Hat movie. And now I can't unhear it. That's totally that guy. I'm getting ahead of myself, so there's this guy, Dr. Glickenstein, the evil scientist that Igor is assigned to. And, uh, he can't invent worth a damn. His inventions are garbage, actually. Go find me a 16 gigawatt temporal transducer! Excuse me, master, are you sure you don't mean 21 gigawatt? You're correcting me! So Igor fantasizes about becoming the greatest evil scientist in the kingdom, and it cuts to the current greatest evil scientist in the kingdom, Dr. Schadenfreude. Yes, his name is Schadenfreude. That's a perfect name for a character in this movie. <laughs> and 
now, the master of disaster, the chief of grief, a man who needs no introduction but who will brutally torture me if he doesn't get one. He was like, you better make me a sick-ass introduction sequence or I'll tear you limb from limb. Fuck hand. <laughs> that is verbatim how that interaction went down. Actual deleted scene from the movie, that's how it went. <laughs> so he's throwing a party and then King Malbert shows up. The greatest evil genius in the world. I remember when people used to call me that back when the clouds destroyed our peaceful land of farmers and my plan to blackmail the world saved us all. Wouldn't blackmailing the world imply he has like world government secrets and is threatening to release them to the public? I thought we were just making evil inventions here. Is this foreshadowing or what else does this guy know? Anyway, it turns out Schadenfreude is not even a real scientist. His lab is fake and every year he just steals an invention with the help of his girlfriend who can disguise herself as every other scientist's girlfriend to steal their inventions. That's a wild concept. Dr. Glickenstein makes a rocket ship, goes inside it, and the rocket blows up. He's dead. And then King Malbert shows up there. Oh no. But then Igor gets a brilliant idea. Dr. Glickenstein is creating life. Did you say life? Yes. Thinking, breathing life that can destroy freely all on its own. This is finally his moment to make an evil invention. I know, right? And she's not even done yet. By the way, did I mention a lot of this movie's soundtrack is Louis Prima? He has like four songs in here, it's really noticeable. <laughs> and now to make her skin indestructible. Did you see that? <laughs> Shoot him again. And now the crucial last piece, the source of all the monster's power. The evil bone. Do not yell at me. <laughs> so the monster comes to life, but it seems to have vanished. Uh, Igor? Yeah, where did the monster go? I don't know, Brain. May I suggest looking behind you? <laughs> Just a suggestion. And that's the trailer scene. People saw that in the trailer and was like, that was kind of funny. I think I'll go see that movie. <laughs> Maybe just, uh, spontaneously combusted? Oh, yeah, uh, sure. I've read about that. And, um. Who am I kidding? I can't read! What up? I'm Jared. I'm 19. <gasps> Created life! Home for blind orphans. Oh god, she's killing blind orphans! That's so evil! I mean, which is great, but. Blind orphans? Crazy that this is the first thing the monster goes to. Orphanage! Gotta kill him! Oh wait, never mind. What diabolical deed she has planned next? Hitty back rides? Meanwhile, Dr. Schadenfreude is out here being iconic. I looked inside Dr. Glickenstein's castle and didn't see anyone. But but that's not all. Yes, it is because your voice is annoying. I'll admit that made 10-year-old me laugh. That was hilarious. What did this? I'm guessing something big. Something like this. Wow. So not only is every other evil scientist smarter than you, and Igor is too. So they leave with those schematics, and Igor lures the monster back to the castle with another Louis Prima song. Oh, baby, won't you please come home? Cause your little dad is gonna be all... Must be making a club of flowers to smash us with. This must be very embarrassing for you. Okay, clearly her evil bone wasn't activated when she came to life. That's it. Ooh, I have an idea. Is it about this situation? No. Is it even an idea? Is french fries an idea? Brain is so real for that. He's just thinking about french fries, man. <laughs> How would he even consume those? Who cares? He's thinking about them. <laughs> He's thinking about french fries. Monster, I command you to kill that fly. No, 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 you're evil. Eva. What? No, you're not Eva! Eva. Eva! So since the monster's not evil, they take her to a brainwash place, and the design of this place is so cool, they put you in a chair and clockwork orange you. Yes, I used clockwork orange as a verb. What are you gonna do about it? Leave a comment on this video? 
Like, comment, and subscribe. Gosh, I feel like I'm sending my kid off to school for the first time. You know, to learn how to murder. Igor, I don't know if you can say that. That's a great out of context clip to use nowhere. You can't use that anywhere. <laughs> Igor, you can't just say something that funny and I'm not allowed to laugh. We live in a reality where I'm not allowed to laugh at that joke. Now that is dark humor. Wish you weren't there. This card teleports your enemy to you so you can destroy him in person. Call me old fashioned, but what happened to cards that just blew your head off? Brain also gets a literal brainwashing there, because why not? The TV remote doesn't work, so he goes over to the monster's chamber, steals their remote. The remote doesn't work here, but it's changing the monster's channels. Maybe they did too much. Oh, was it? Was I too much? I was pushing, wasn't I? So it brainwashed the monster into thinking she's Molly Shannon the actress. <laughs> it's just failure after failure. After failure, after failure. Oh, sorry. I thought we were counting off all your failures. After that, Schadenfreud chases them with a shrink ray. It's a car chase scene, yada yada. They're dangling off a cliff. The monster saves them. You saved my life. As an actor, I feel things very deeply, and I treasure all of life. I was the one who changed the channel on her brainwash. What? Yep. And if she had been evil, she would have let us all die. So technically, I'm the one who saved us. You made my monster an actress! Oh, what play are they rehearsing? Brain dead. <laughs> Don't let him kill me! It's gonna be a smash. Don't let him kill me! The only thing killed here is my dream. What a charming little movie this is. So now Igor is like, damn it, my monster thinks they're an actress. How am I gonna win the evil science competition and become the greatest evil scientist in malaria? How about... I trick the monster into thinking the science competition is actually the musical play Annie. The plucky orphan whose song of hope lifts the heart of a weary nation. Yeah, except in this version, Annie goes nuts and battles a bunch of evil inventions in deadly hand-to-hand -hand combat. Wow, how avant-garde. Yeah, trust me, you were born to be in this production. Can you imagine a face like that on a 40-foot screen? Oh! I can't believe it. I might actually be able to pull this off. I'd rather be a good nobody than an evil somebody. I wonder if some kid saw this movie and was like, you know what, this movie convinced me to not be evil. This is what did it. That would be funny. So Schadenfreude's in his lair like, I can't believe that car chase with the shrink ray didn't pan out for me. I can just picture Igor and his monster now, plotting their deadly combat maneuvers. <laughs> We cut to a montage of Eva rehearsing for the play, set to The Bigger the Figure. Another Louis Prima song, but this one's a banger. The bigger the figure, the better I like it, the better I like it, the better I feed it, the better I feed it, the bigger the figure, the better the figure, the more I can love. It's a really wholesome montage of Igor, Scamper, Brain, Eva. They're all bonding as a friend group. It's, it's real nice. So after that, there's only a day left until the science fair. Eva gives them all gifts. She gives Brain a name tag to cover over the Brian he misspelled on the glass there. Scamper gets an immortal cactus, and Igor gets a beret. You know, like, directors have? Directors have berets, I guess? So now Igor is conflicted because Eva's such a good person and he feels bad for lying to her about what this play actually is and, and what her purpose is. This is the kind of moment that'd be tough for someone who wasn't meant to be an evil scientist. Somebody who'd go all soft and want to tell her the truth. But, but lucky for us, I'm evil, right? I just imagine Igor as a live streamer. Chat, am I evil? Be honest, am I an evil scientist? Dr. Schadenfreude, thanks for the raid. <laughs> and then Heidi shows up. She was Glickenstein's girlfriend and also Jacqueline in disguise. I don't know if I established that earlier. She's a character. She is a character in this. <laughs> wish you weren't there. She gives Igor that wish you weren't there card and that teleports him to Schadenfreude's castle. I love that that dialogue earlier of Scamper reading the wish you weren't there card and what it does. That actually became relevant later as a plot device. That's amazing. <laughs> so Schadenfreude pretty much lays everything out for Igor. I'm gonna use your monster to win the science fair, overthrow King Malbert, and then I'll be the new king! And then you'll become an evil scientist or whatever your dream was. I couldn't give less of a damn. So what do you say to that? Is that nice? Is that really nice? So Igor explains about Eva. She can't be in the science fair. Her evil bone wasn't activated. She won't be able to beat up the other inventions because she's not evil. So how do we get this evil bone up and running, huh? We kick it, we slap it, we take it to the movies, call it Irene? I don't know, Igor, have you tried that? Have you tried calling the evil bone Irene? That might do it. <laughs> Just take Eva to the movies, start whispering Irene into her finger, and she goes on a murder spree. That was her sleeper agent code word. <laughs> she needs to commit an evil act, but since she's not evil, she won't. <laughs> 
Well, your troubles are over then. Because I can get a woman to do absolutely anything. And Schadenfreude is like, all right, bet. I can probably activate the evil bone. <laughs> I am ruining the tone of this movie with my commentary. Thanks for watching so far. Meanwhile, back at Igor's place, Heidi calls Eva ugly. And that hurts. That really hurts, man. So now Eva feels bad. Do you think I'm pretty? And Scamper and Brain give her a makeover. Brain, get me a tub of eyeliner, a pound of lipstick, and if all else fails, the severed head of a supermodel. So Igor leaves that sauna place and Heidi returns to Schadenfreude. Wait, no kissing Heidi. Oh, do you like me better as Heidi? Hmm, Jacqueline, Heidi, Jacqueline, Heidi. Yeah! Is that why their names are that? Damn, that's clever. That's a good bit. Jacqueline Heidi, that's that's uh, that's clever. It would be really swell if you didn't go psycho girlfriend on me right now. I'm not psycho! Jennifer Coolidge, everybody. Clipping the mic in the vocal booth. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> give her a hand for that vo- Give her a hand for that performance of a lifetime. <laughs> How would you feel if every day you had to be 13 different people? I think I'd have a mental disorder. Igor returns to see Eva in a Japanese geisha makeover and she falls down the stairs. Our work here is done. Our work? You spent the entire time playing with a piece of ribbon. So Igor's about to tell Eva the truth, but this is where things get complicated, so let me just break it down real quick. Heidi distracts Igor while Schadenfreude tells Eva that Igor lied about everything. Igor would never lie to me. Igor cares about me. Cares? He doesn't care? Because he built you to be a weapon. He's like, come with me, I'll be your new manager. Come with me, I will make you a star. Actual demon energy. This dude's a straight up villain. Wow. When it rains, it pours. Was there supposed to be rain in that scene? Did they forget to put rain in the movie? <laughs> King Malbert shows up again, discovering that Dr. Glickenstein has been dead the whole movie. And he didn't invent life, did he? No. Uh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> An Igor inventing. Where is it? It's a she, and I think someone's taken her. Well, if she comes back, we'll just tell her where to find you. In the Igor recycling plant! No! Please! No! No! Oh yeah, that is something I kind of glossed over. In this evil kingdom, Igors can be recycled for parts when they're no longer useful. This movie is sick and twisted. Can you imagine being chopped up and used for body parts and God knows what else? Horrible. So obviously, Brain and Scamper go in to save him. What are you doing here? We're here to rescue you! I don't want to be rescued. I'm an Igor, and this is what happens to us. So they break out of that and get chased down the caverns of malaria. What are you doing? Looking for the secret passage? There's always a secret passage! Darn it, Braid, there's no secret passage. It's over. I'm sorry, you were saying? Technically, it's a secret staircase. Igor would be excellent at cinema sins. Ding. So the science fair is happening. <laughs> Welcome to you and the millions of viewers around the globe. They come from all corners. And just look at them. They're all worried sick about one thing, world peace. Well, tonight, it's within their grasp. And it has but a small price. And that price is 100 Billion dollar. I'm gonna call cap on that. There is no way that world peace would be less than a trillion dollars. I for one, I think they can do it. And if they don't, well, the evil invention last standing will be unleashed on the world. Oh, just be too horrible to imagine. Oh, that's what he meant earlier by blackmailing the world. It's like what Igor said at the beginning of the movie. We invent him and the world pays us not to unleash him. But is that actually blackmail or is that just extortion? Do I not know the definition of words? Maybe. <laughs> Where are we? And why am I panting? I don't have lungs. Well, maybe Igor secretly put a pair of lungs in you, brain. Great question. <laughs> it's the beacon of evil on top of the royal castle. Wait, is it a beacon? Whoa, 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 wait! 
are you going? And bring me back a toy! I'm just gonna let this scene play out. It's one of the greatest twist reveal scenes in cinema. Isn't that nuts? My childhood mind was blown. I was like, holy fuck, dude. <laughs> so Schadenfreude just berates Eva until she slaps him away, which activates the evil bone. Malarians, let's get evil. So the evil science competition begins, and they straight up reuse the same footage for the intro at the beginning of the movie. And I get that reusing shots is a way to save money from the budget, but I like to think they just enter the same evil inventions every year. It's like, maybe this year the giant metal teddy bear will kill them all. That's Dr. Schadenfreude's invention? <laughs> It'd be funny if Schadenfreude took a microphone and was like, I was not able to change the monster's costume. They insisted on looking like Annie from the musical. <laughs> So even with the evil bone activated, Eva still plays the musical role of Annie, but now she's able to beat up the other inventions, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool scene. Leave it to Schottenfroy! Destroying his enemies with a giant girl in a red dress! I can't believe Schottenfroy did it again! What are you doing? Overthrow! He's your new king! Ha <laughs> ha! And if you have a problem with that, please take it up with the head of my complaint department, who's the big monster over there. Congratulations, Schadenfreude. Enjoy your six minutes left of the movie of being king of malaria. <laughs> so not only does Eva win the science competition by beating all the other monsters, she starts pulling down the support beams of the Colosseum, just, was just gonna kill everyone in there. But Igor stops her and hammers in the moral of the movie. This isn't you! This is just a role. You don't have to play it. Yes, she does! You're an ego, she's an evil invention! No. Everyone has an evil bone in their body, but we choose whether or not to use it. And as someone I love once said, it's better to be a good nobody than an evil somebody. This was such a good end of the movie reveal. The clouds are finally gone after two decades of darkness. Sunlight returns to malaria. <laughs> I'm not evil. I'm Eva. That is the correct answer. For generations, King Malbert has kept us in the dark by creating the clouds with a weather ray. He lied to us. We trusted him and he lied to us. He tricked us into thinking we needed to be evil to survive. But we don't! None of us do. Who is this movie for? What what evil ass children needed to see this movie? I was like, oh, I guess I'm I guess I'm not supposed to be evil. I just imagine some parents like, gosh, my ch my kid is so evil. How do I get him to stop? It's 2008. If only there was a movie that could teach this kid a lesson. <laughs> You know, hypothetically. I don't know if the light behind me was distracting. I turned it off. Long live King Schadenfreude! Everybody! King Malbert the Liar is dead! 
can't live King Shadow Pride! Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Anyway, the Evil Death Coliseum becomes a community theater. Because obviously. <laughs> and those blind orphans from earlier are gonna sing a little song. In fact, it will be the most on the nose pop song for the end of this movie. Like, as if the song was made for the end of this movie. <laughs> Well, at least it wasn't pocket full of sunshine. I got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. And that was Igor. <laughs> this was my first time making a movie commentary type of video. How was it? Leave a like, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel.